So thank you, David, and thank you all for coming to this uh, session. My name is Ruth Bridger. I'm the VP of Marketing at SORCOM. And uh, we've been uh, part of the Astros community since 2004. And what we'd like to demonstrate for you today, first we'll talk about uh, how we see Asterisk being used to improve the quality of life for seniors. And to put you in the mood here, I'm going to play a little something that I found on YouTube. Can we hear that? No. Hi there. If you are young and haven't started misplacing things and being absent-minded, don't feel too smug about it because your time is coming. I guarantee it. You'll never know how much it really bugs you. You'll never know until your brain's impaired. Listen. So much for that. The idea was to show you um, that part of aging is also a little bit of memory loss. And uh, so even if we have a rather young audience here, um, maybe things, these are things that you can identify with uh, maybe your parents or your grandparents. But also we're, we're talking about dementia and other things that uh, limit people from their function, their usual function. So just a few uh, background uh, slides here of the challenges of old age. And uh, what you see on the screen here is a mapping of where countries where over 20% of the population currently is over the age of 65. So you see a lot of uh, Western Europe there, Scandinavia and Japan where in 2050, the world looks a little bit different. So we have what we call an epidemic of aging, okay? People are living longer. And if we look uh, over the course of, uh, say, the last uh, half century or so, not only is the population at large growing, but the percentage of people living past middle age and well into um, their 80s and uh, even 90s is also growing very fast. And um, what that means uh, for senior care is that you have less people on the lower rungs to care for more people that are in the more senior age groups. In this slide, we see a little bit of uh, the challenge uh, from the viewpoint of costs. If we're looking at in 2010, and these, these are studies that were performed in the United States, that it cost $40,000 a year on average for an assisted living facility, and there were about 39 million people age 65 or older. In 2015, uh, the cost increased to about 51,000 per year, and you can see that um, the population growth is um, uh, quite, um, that's a, quite a, a large rise where the potential caregivers is growing at a much more slow pace. So the cost of care is increasing greatly. Uh, the number of people that will be in the age group where they require care is increasing greatly, while the potential caregivers is uh, roughly static. And what does this mean? Well. When you have increased life expectancies, of course, it means that you're going to have more old people, more seniors. And um, as with any developed civilization, uh, the quality of service needs to improve all the time. On the other side, there's a decrease in care by family members. And this is due to the nature of our societies in the Western world, where 
Uh, we no longer all live in the same family unit, maybe not even in the same town or city. And so as families disperse, uh, the bulk of care for senior citizens is now on outside services. Uh, based on studies uh, in the United States of late, a uh, query of senior citizens showed that uh, more than 80% preferred to age in place, meaning stay where they are. They don't want to go to some kind of facility. They want to stay at home. Um, that's also complemented by the fact that there aren't enough facilities as the population increases, you'll need more facilities, but a lot of these places are uh, not, not for profit and they're not being built at the pace that's required for seniors. Expenses are increasing in the medical uh, field uh, for care and uh, for all of the equipment and, and the medications, and there's not enough manpower. So, as um, veteran developers of uh, Asterisk applications and, and products for Asterisk, uh, we realize that there is a tremendous opportunity here. And um, we've created a system that we call Amity. And uh, with this system, which is completely based on Asterisk, um, we think we found a solution which will allow seniors to live at home longer. Um, it also supports the idea of distributed retirement homes. That means that you don't have to have one facility and all of the equipment in that facility. You can have an administration that can monitor and service populations that are outside of a single facility. Um, one thing that's very popular and growing these days are campuses, where on a single campus you can have uh, single fa family dwellings for the most independent residents, you can have areas where there are apartments, but each one has a separate entrance. You have a, a kind of semblance of uh, privacy, but they're more centrally located to uh, the medical resources. And then on that same campus, you would have uh, uh, assisted living facilities where you have 24-hour uh, staff and so forth. So on one widespread campus, you have varying levels of uh, support that you can give to the residents. Um, some of the components of Amity. Uh, up in the right-hand corner is um, our server, the Amity server, which is basically an asterisk-based PBX. We're taking advantage of the fact that we have uh, the knowledge and the technology to support uh, IP and hybrid uh, you know, PSTN calls on the same unit and incorporate those into the data network. So we have the PBX, which serves as a control and monitoring system. Take note that there is a funny little antenna there in the front, that's Zigbee. Zigbee is a uh, wireless protocol. It's very low power, which means that it uh, has an extremely long life uh, for uh, the different uh, components of the system, and I'll go into that a little bit later. But the Amity supports uh, a series of sensors or, or end devices. And these sensors uh, can bring a lot of different kinds of information into the system. Uh, one of the biggest problems with seniors, especially those living on their own, is that uh, if they fall, and they do have a tendency to fall, uh, it takes quite a long time to get assistance, not only because they're incapacitated, but for them to be able to reach out and, and call for help. So uh, one of the types of sensors that we've built into the Amity system is a fall detection sensor. Uh, it also knows how to give uh, location reporting. So we use um, um, three point uh, system for, for uh, location and uh, this can be used to locate um, not only people that are wandering but uh, we can use it also in, in, uh, in asset management for example. But I'm gonna stick to the senior care market here. You can get information about the room status the temperature, the ambient lighting, uh, the electrical appliances that are on or off, um, whether a door is open or closed, um, you know, uh, movement, uh, peer sensors. Another uh, item that's uh, supported is a panic button. In the lower right-hand corner, you'll see this is a nurse call button. So every standard hospital has one of these buttons, but they can be adapted also for uh, home use. We have sensors uh, showing uh, that the bed is occupied or unoccupied. Uh, diaper status and posture status. If there's um, 
there's another critical um, issue with the turning of patients in beds to eliminate bed sores, and uh, they need to be they need to move, uh, and uh, so all of these uh, sensors are in, uh, located in the components in the Amity system. On the uh, administration side, you get advanced real-time data analysis. Uh, you can get early diagnosis. When you have the sensors showing that uh, the patient's positioning, you can even have an indication based on uh, the attitude of the shoulders or the hips, whether the patient is attempting to get up out of bed and you know, uh, based on his profile, that that's um, uh, not something that he can accomplish on his own and you can already uh, get somebody out to check on him. You have real-time alerts, you have database event logging, all kinds of reports, and uh, because the unit is wireless, it's very easy uh, to expand throughout the facilities. And uh, like I say, since it's based on our asterisk uh, PBX, it, is, uh, it includes a full integration with uh, the telephony and um, the, the network. In the future, we can continue to add things such as medication rem reminders. We can have, uh, you know, kind of alerts sent out to the patient or the nursing staff that a, a patient uh, requires his, uh, his medication. Um, there are dispensers that are automatic in the field and you can track the, uh, the status. Did the patient take his medication? If not, you can send an alert, et cetera. Uh, there are, we integrate with room intercoms. We integrate with other uh, medical systems to provide medical telemetry. And uh, like I said, we can also link into the different utilities to um, issue reports on consumption of uh, power and uh, water. So taking a look at the actual Amity system, you have what's called the coordinator, which is basically the PBX with the Zigbee uh, uh, antenna that coordinates, and it is connected to a series of routers and uh, their end devices. And the end devices uh, could be like those uh, other items that you saw on the screen, the nurse call button, for example. So the coordinator being the PBX. Here's an example of a router. And this router, by the way, there is one next to the fire alarm system there. I put one up. We're going to be using that in our demo in a bit. The nurse call system is the sample of an uh, end device. And uh, SysWatch, this is a, another application that uh, we're developing. Uh, the patient wears it, just uh, gives information like a, a, a normal and stylistic watch would, but it includes a panic button, it includes a location indicator, uh, et cetera. That's a, another example of an end device. We're talking about the connection to the telephony network, and uh, just like with your Asterisk PBX server, you can connect to mobile phones, analog, IP phones, fax, cell phones, deck phones, the whole gamut. On the local network side, that's where you would uh, connect in your nurse's station, the manager station, uh, also to the maintenance control. And of course, um, you do support uh, the connection to the internet, so you have remote access, remote alerts and services, extensions, and video calls. Say someone's living at home, they prefer to live at home, but they do want to be able to check in uh, with the nurse or doctor once a week, you can establish a video call through the system uh, so that you have uh, that kind of communication as well. So with this uh, nurse call button, there are many nurse call buttons on the market today, and the basic functionality is, okay, I need assistance, I'm going to press the button, some signal is going to go out to the nurse's station. Well, in our Amity device, not only is it a call to the nurse's station, but it's basically a two-way uh, signal. You get the feedback, you get, uh, once the nurse answers the call, uh, the unit itself uh, vibrates and there, uh, a light uh, lights up. So you get immediate feedback that someone has received uh, your call for assistance and uh, is on their way. And uh, like I said before, because it's based on the Zigbee, we do have the locator. So we know um, who initiated the call and where they're located in the facility. Um, it also has a sensor there the, uh, to give us an indication of whether the bed is occupied or not. And as I uh, mentioned before, the pre-fall alert based on the, the posture of the patient. The posture sensor, like I said, to avoid bed sores, to give the pre-fall pre alert. Um, you can also map different patient behaviors into the system. 
For example, if you know um, behaviors of uh, one of the patients is that um, you know, they're up every morning by 8 o'clock you know, to, uh, to go to the bathroom to get their breakfast, whatever, and you see that the, the, the bed has, has remained occupied past the 8 o'clock, then you can, get a, um, you can program in a signal to the Amity so that the nurse's station will already be alerted that there's something to be checked in that room. And the watch, again, it has the fall detection, it has an emergency button, it can give the time and the location, uh, all of that information passed directly into the monitoring system. Above and beyond, you have the room sensors. You can have um, that, that unit that I show you over there. Uh, it can um, support various types of sensors. It can act as its own burglar alarm. If you program it that uh, you don't want any kind of movement in that room, maybe it's, uh, it's vacant. And uh, if you get movement there, then that's a, an alert that something's wrong. Uh, you can prevent uh, tenants from wandering because if you see that there's motion when you know that they're not supposed to leave the room, that's an indicator. Um, you can determine the type of alert, a uh, red alert or a yellow alert. Yellow alert is kind of a warning uh, just to, to go and check, uh, and a red alert, of course, uh, needs immediate attention. And it can be used for energy saving, like I said. Uh, if it's an unoccupied room, you can make sure that the air conditioning is not on, etc. all kinds of integrations there. As far as the monitoring capabilities, I have uh, here a diagram of a facility. Um, with these uh, motion detectors, you can get uh, signals on the, um, on the nursing station screen. You know, you can see the layout of the facility. You can see where uh, there's been a red alert, a code blue, um, where there's a wandering patient. You can get any kind of information from the Zigbee system because it's um, this uh, router network. It keeps a constant event journal so that you have uh, real-time information about uh, what events uh, were initiated from whom, where, and uh, then have a different screen for any kind of action required and who, who is on top of it. And then uh, staff status, so it's a whole um, monitoring and uh, control uh, environment as well for the, for the nursing station. So the Amity works as a virtual retirement village so that you can allow seniors to what's called age in place. They can continue to live as independently as possible in their own homes, but knowing that they have backup, that they have someone who uh, is there to assist them uh, the instant that they need it. They have uh, free, uh, you know, freedom of movement and uh, the familiarity of their surroundings, and yet at any time they can be in touch with the nur nursing staff. And uh, all of these services can be provided remotely through the system. And uh, what it comes down to is enabling these seniors to live at home longer, saving expenses, coming, you know, providing better quality of care because people do want to um, remain in their own homes. <laughs>